Good morning, here I am in Glastonbury, um, very early in the morning. We're about to do something which is a 100 year old tradition and involves the monarch. So let's go and see what's happening. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're at the town hall again, and this time I've got John Cousins, the mayor, and it's Jennifer, the high sheriff. Jennifer the High Show. As usual, I like to hang around with all the best people in town. So, why are we here today, ladies and gentlemen, and what can you tell us about the occasion? Well, Gabriel, today we're here for the annual ceremony of the cutting of the Holy Thorn, which, of course, as everyone knows, we cut a sprig of the Holy Thorn from St John's Church to send to the monarch. But this year, it's different because we have a new king, King Charles, as you know. So this will be the first time very first time that the sprig is going to his majesty rather than her majesty. And of course, those of you not very good at maths, this is King Charles III, you know that. King Charles III. So you, this is your first role as, uh, to do this, isn't it, obviously? My first role, my first year as High Sheriff and the first time I've been invited here and I've been very excited about coming to Glastonbury and taking part in this. So we, we've tried to get Jennifer to come to Glastonbury many times. We have. Uh, and it's never happened, but today. Today, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful. Fantastic. And look, for the for the child taking part, who is traditionally the oldest child at St John's School. The oldest child in St John's School will cut the holy thorn, and it's um, what it says in the tradition is that to cut the thorn with the vicar and the mayor. Mm. But invariably, what it means is that the child cuts the thorn, and we look on. Yes. Uh, in in reverence, of course. Okay, and so this child's got quite an occasion because they're the first one not doing it for the Queen. So, I mean, yes. in living memory for a lot of people, quite, right. quite, a, quite an occasion. It, it's absolutely historic, and I think that they'll, because of that, there'll be quite a few people up there today, and mm. I'm sure we'll see later in the video. I think I checked up and it's been going for about 100 years, this tradition. So, she's, there's it only is. 30 of them haven't gone to the Queen in That's all that right. time. That's um, quite amazing. It, the tradition was revived by um, Reverend Smithit Lewis in the 1920s and we are wondering whether this year, 22, is actually the centenary of this revival of the tradition. Ooh, oh, that'd be interesting to know. If we find out, I'll put the information in the description below. There you go. So we better get ready. You better get ready. We've got to go and walk up to the church, ladies and gentlemen. We're not processing, we're just meandering today. Aren't we? yeah, a bit of meandering. Right, this, is a, this is an official meander up to the church, and we'll see you when we get up there, where David's going to talk to us, hopefully. The vicar. Thank you. As you can see, a big event. All the kids from the local St John's Primary School are here. So is this all of St John's Primary School? Are you all here nearly? Wow. There's a lot. There's an awful lot of you, isn't there? Wow, hello everybody! So what's your name then? Eris. That's a good name, isn't it? So you're going to be cutting this for today for who? The King. Well, that's a very big thing, isn't it? Because it's always been the Queen up to now, isn't it? You're the first person to cut this for the King. That makes you very important, did you know that? Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? You're very important today. What's it like to be that important? Is it good? Yes. Well, you have a lovely day, all right? So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, all the youngsters are here today. All of the dignitaries have arrived. The very important little lady over there who's going to cut it, hello. And all the other dignitaries hanging around, we've got druids, we've got high sheriffs, we've got mayors, we've got chairs of town councils. Hello, darling. Right. Everybody's here for this occasion, which, as I say, has been going on now for about 100 years. So that's an awful long time. And of course, the Queen will have received 70 of those out of that 100 years, which is quite an amazing thing. Oh, that's brilliant. It works outside as well as in school. A very, very warm welcome to all of you as we come together as the community of Glastonbury to cut the Holy Thorn. This year it's very special. Why is it very special? Yes? 
It is. It's the first year in a long, long, long time when we cut the holy thorn and send it to the king. Certainly in my lifetime, I've never sent it to a king. It's always been to Her Majesty the Queen. And we have been in contact with Buckingham Palace and they are expecting it later this week because it takes with the way the postal system is at the moment, it will take a couple of days for it to arrive. And then once it gets to Buckingham Palace, it's sent on to where the King is spending Christmas. Where do we hope the King will place this thorn? Be polite, there are lots of cameras. <laughs> where do you think it's going to be sent? Yes, well done, in the middle of the King's Christmas table. How fantastic is that? Which means on Christmas Day, he will be thinking of all of us here in Glastonbury. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Brilliant. So who knows the story all about this holy thorn? Who can tell me a little bit about it? Yep. Say that a bit again. Well, you're almost there. Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph of Arimathea was a very important man. He was the man who went to Pilate on that very first Good Friday when Jesus died on the cross and he said, can I please put Jesus in my tomb? I've got a really nice tomb to put him in. And so Pontius Pilate said, yeah, I think that's all right. And for whatever reason, we'll never know that, Joseph of Arimathea, some years later, apparently decided to come here to Glastonbury. And in those days, there was lots and lots of water, so it was easier for him to get about in Glastonbury. And he placed a thorn where? Where did he place the very first holy thorn, do you think? Sorry, who said that? <laughs> yes? Well, on Wirral Hill, that's right, he placed it on there. And what's so special about this thorn is that it only flowers twice a year. Who can tell me which time of year it flowers? Yes. December, though, yeah, it does, in the winter. And where else does it flower? Easter, well done, it does. And that is amazing because Easter is different dates every single year. And this tree hasn't let us down either this year. It seems to know that in a few days time, it will be Christmas. And so we've got some lovely flowers and some berries. So we've been doing this for a very, very long time, where with Eris's help and with the mayor's help and with mine, we cut the holy thorn together and then we'll all cheer and then we'll send it off to the king. And the king always writes back and he will write back naming you as well. Because we say you've cut the holy thorn back in January and we'll make sure that the school have a copy of this because again, it will be the first time we get a letter from the king to say thank you very much for sending it. Five, four, three, two, one. Cut. Oh, Yay. yes. There we are. You hold that. You hold Hooray. that there. That's it. Well done. Hooray. Now what's very, very special, very special is that we have a song that St. John's School have written. Are you ready to sing this? There is a very special tree.
Brilliant. Brilliant. Three cheers for His Majesty the King. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming today. It hasn't quite snowed. This is the 14th year I've been here leading this, and I'm pleased to say this is the 14th year it hasn't rained or snowed, so that's a good thing for all of us. Here with the town clerk. Hi, everyone. Everybody turns out today, so it's a big day today, isn't it? So this is your first one of these, isn't it? It is indeed, Gabriel, yes. Oh. My very first one. Excellent. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I did. It was fantastic. And the um, song sung by the school children was fantastic. And I wasn't... And what a brilliant day for it. Like like Dave was saying, it, the weather's always been good for this, hasn't it? It has, yes. And actually, every event we've done this year, we've had extra weather for it. We so have! We've very lucky. We have. And, have. and of course, and of course, this, as I keep saying, this is a monumentous one because it's going to the King's Table today. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm back with Jennifer, but this time I've got uh, Thomas with me. Thomas Shepherd. Thomas right. Shepherd. Now you are deputy deputy lieutenant of Somerset. Of Somerset, and you are high sheriff of Somerset. So you're to do with legal matters, and you represent the Queen. Have I got that roughly right? The monarchy and the matters of law and order. See, we on this channel, ladies and gentlemen, we try and educate. So your role exactly is what? It's representing the um, the crown. Mm -hmm. So um, so you used to say king, yet would you still say queen a lot, like I do? <laughs> <laughs> Get honest. <laughs> and um, also supporting the police and yes. emergency services, and then in uh, modern day doing as much as we can to support voluntary services, charity groups, and um, I can say all faith. Which is interesting here this morning with. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So your role is? Well, my role, we came in much later. I mean, Jenny's role is about a thousand years old. No, and you used to have to shoot Robin Hood, didn't you? And everything. Long before that. Absolutely. Yeah. And so it was in the Tudor time that they uh -huh. decided they needed a, a Lord Lieutenant for each county to deal with the military mm -hmm. and to represent the, 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 the monarch of the mm -hmm. time being in the county mm -hmm. separately from the work that was done by the High Sheriff. Oh, I see. So it can, can be very confusing as to, well, who's who? I can imagine. And, and, and actually, the point is that we don't have much of a uniform, but the High Sheriff has a fantastic uniform. So they, the High Sheriff always stands out because they are, they've been around for a very, very they've long They've been around, do you know, tricorder hat and a bow and arrow and everything. <laughs> I sheriff last year. Oh, you you I did, didn't yeah. I? Of course I did. Yes. I was in velvet, you see. Ah. You see me and Wool is the same thing. I saw a man in velvet. I couldn't remember that. <laughs> this is Glastonbury. Men in velvet. There's loads of them out the front of the church. <laughs> That's Glastonbury. Absolutely. Well, today was fantastic. The first time it's been done for a king. As I, I keep saying, queen still, but I'm sure many people do because I was looking around and there must have been probably two, maybe three people here who remember when it wasn't a queen. Do you think you'll ever come here? Well, the queen did, didn't you? I think it's something to look forward to. Yeah, I think, I think so. It's something to look forward to. He's, of course, in his first few years, he's going to be under so much demand. To of be course he is. But, you know, he's going to last a fair old time. He's going to, it's in his family, isn't it? So when he turns up in the interview, I can't call him your madge. You've got to be a bit more formal than that, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> Chuck or anything like that. Chuck, no. Chuck, no, no, Chuck's not good. Charlie, don't do that. <laughs> anyway, Happy thank Christmas you so much for talking to us. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'll see these lovely people again throughout the course of the year. But for now, thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Bye-bye. So ladies and gentlemen, we're heading into the church now. Um, I don't quite know what. And then we're going to be, we wanted to go and have a look at the school where these lovely school children have all come from today. So we're going to go there next. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the church has been beautifully decorated. There are trees everywhere. Look at the trees. Look at the wonderful trees. Well, each one of us, each one of us, is now part of Glastonbury history. How about that? So, if you are in reception, just pop your hands up for me. Okay, hands down, year one, year two, St. Benedict School, mayor and dignitaries. See, look at that. We're all part of this wonderful event that, although it happens every year, 
reception when you grow up and you are as old as me, which might be in a few years time perhaps, you'll be able to say, I was there on that special day of the 14th of December 2022, when we sent the first cutting of the honey thorn to the King of England, Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland. How about that? Absolutely amazing. You may not feel it now, you might be a bit cold, but you will in time. And Eris, where are you Eris? Just pop your hand up, I've lost you for a minute. Brilliant. You, you are the first person ever since 1952 to have cut a holy thorn to a king and when you grow up you'll be able to say just that and we will make sure that you and your family get a copy of the letter from his majesty when he writes and i'm sure your head teacher will remind me to make sure you get that in the new year so we've come in here partly to remind ourselves that we are part of a big community of glastonbury schools town council We've got members representing um, much higher up of Somerset and here representing the King too, which is fantastic. And I brought you in because also in this very church, we have 40 trees, 40 Christmas trees. I've only got one. How many have got more than one Christmas tree at home? Okay, put your hands up if you've got more than 10. Really, you've got more than 10? 10 Christmas trees, have you? I bet nobody's got more than 40, though. I think that's pushing it. I don't think anybody would have more than 40. No, I didn't think so. So we have the most Christmas trees in Glastonbury in one place. But what makes these Christmas trees so special is that every single tree has been decorated according to the group. So we've got St John's Infant School right at the back. We've got the Town Council somewhere down the side, I think. We've got a lovely tinsel. Who likes tinsel? Who likes tinsel? Yes. Well, the tree that's just about behind our chair of governors of the infant school, you will see the most amazing tinsel tree. Um, and I personally put all that tinsel on. I couldn't get any more on it at all because I just thought Christmas is all about tinsel and it's all about lights. And the light shines out of the darkness. This is why we haven't got many lights on this morning, is to remind us that it is very dark outside. It is very dark at night, especially at the minute. But how many, like, how many of you have seen stars in the sky recently? Well, what we've cleverly done is we brought stars. That's why we have lights on our Christmas tree, to remind us of the stars, to remind us of night, and to remind us that the light always shines out of the darkness. So let's just sit nice and still while I say a prayer for Christmas. Dear God, we thank you that in the darkness of the night, you were born quietly in a stable, a smelly, dirty stable. But we give thanks that the shepherds sure that saw the light and came to worship your Son, who came to be the Saviour of our world, to bring light into the world, into our hearts, into Glastonbury, into the world. We thank you, God. So may this Christmas bring each one of us that light that brings happiness, joy and peace. Amen. So His Majesty's representatives, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. Through some sundry houses. And uh, of course, we, let's not forget the first estate. Um, it was a year ago that Thomas planted with, with me and Annie Moore, and I think there were a few other people there, but I certainly remember us being there, planted the pencil oak for the start of this prestigious year, a year of the Platinum Jubilee, the centenary of Glastonbury Past and Present, and of course it's been a year in which we have had a new monarch as well. So throughout this year it's been extraordinary and trees have featured strongly and none less than the tree that we see here which is our own holy thorn. I'm so pleased to see 
that it is in flower as well. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful, which uh, I'm very pleased to say that Thomas also planted for us. So Thomas has been a man of trees, a green man, a green man. So, uh, and also now, of course, a deputy lieutenant. So uh, we're, there we are. So uh, it's such a pleasure to see this wonderful tree here. This tree, of course, is the staff. Whenever we look at this tree, we're looking at the staff of Joseph of Arimathea. And I know that the mayoress would like to say a few words about Joseph of Arimathea and his staff. But before we do, may we toast. At the end of the Buckton film, there is the child of a new beginning. And today we've seen the eldest child of St. John's cutting the holy thorn. So I think it only fitting in the presence of our thorn here to toast the child of a new beginning. The child of a new child beginning. A new beginning. What's really interesting is this new tree that has been planted is actually in line with the aisle and the nave of the abbey. It's in sight of the tall St. Michael's Hill. But there's a very exceptional thing about Joseph, which struck, struck me a long time ago, which is that he's obviously a man of wisdom, but he was a geomancer. He understood what planting a staff actually meant and what the intentions were. And geomancer is often just referred to as a lover of the planet or a lover of the earth, but it's also the word used to describe those elders and medicine people, whatever terms they use and whatever na names they use for the divine, in understanding and being able to work consciously with the energies of the land, the energies of the sea, and to me, Joseph was a wise person who was a geomancer. It seems only fitting at the end of this extraordinary year to toast the monarch, the king and the land, of course, are one. That is the secret of the grail. And I would like to propose a toast to King Charles III. King Charles III. Long may he reign and long may Glastonbury flourish. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of that. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm going to go and get a coffee because I've not had one yet. And you know me when I've not had a coffee. So that's it. That's the occasion, the first cutting of the tree for the new king. And you've seen everybody down here to celebrate that. We've been to the school. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one, whenever that may be. But for now, bye-bye.